Okay, so I made a really long video. I went into a lot of detail on the whys and the hows and what I was doing for what reason and why it took so much to do whatever. Big long video. You want to watch it? You want to know what all the different considerations I took? Feel free. Check it out. Um, if not, I'm trying to make a shorter video for those who just want to get the damn thing and go. <laughs> so, all right. What we have here is basically a heated AMS. It's for basically drying out your filament. This is not just to reduce humidity. It's to actually dry your filament as well while it's in there if you need to. Um, right now, we're going a bit crazy because we're running around 64% for our humidity here. So... Yeah, it was it was definitely necessary and needed because I'm just I've been battling it. It keeps going in and every time the humidity gets high, I can't print. So, we all know AMS has those great little containers that you can download and print. Uh the desiccants, I've literally been nuke away in those little desiccant beads ev like every 2 days, every 2 or 3 days. Um actually. So, I've got it off right now, but I had it on and we are down to about 26 here, about 32 as you can see the air starting to seep in. Um, the print, it's pretty straightforward. It's three pieces to make a dome, okay? It replaces the existing AMS lid, okay? Um, if you don't know how to take off your AMS lid, it was kind of weird to me at first too. Basically on this side, Underneath, you can get an Allen wrench. You gotta have a longer one. It's 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 a good four or five inches right here. Um, but you can reach up, and on the bottom of these little hinge blocks, there are two screws. So, and it's on each side of a separator down here, or a brace, or a rib, or whichever one thing you want to call it. But once you undo these two screws, and you bring them down, catch the screws. There's two little blocks that come out. Um, in the Print design, it calls for three millimeter because it's a three millimeter pin. You don't have to use three millimeter screws, okay? Um, you can use a wire hanger, you can use a pin, you can use whatever you need, but it's three millimeters that goes into this block, so you want it to be about that size. Um, you can glue it, whatever. I used uh, three millimeter by 20s, and they fit. Um, it doesn't have to be real long coming out the other side, just a couple. You know, about five millimeters is fine, which is what this is. Um, and once you do that, you just put the two pins together here and then seat them back together while it's basically facing the right way so that you can get them in there. Um, that's how you get your lid off and how you can put this one back on. I made this with... Uh, hinge pieces so that it fits right back where the original lid is. I've got my original lid here. I didn't want to throw it away. To me, it's like 35 bucks. I didn't want to do that. Um, I've downloaded a ton of stuff. I'm making this print available for free. Um, so, what the heck? Um, I'm going to do a separate video to explain the wiring for this, but to put this together, it's very simple. I've got three little pieces on each one of these. So you're going to need six screws. They're just three millimeter by about five to ten, five, seven, six, something. It's small. They're tapered size holes. So it's they're big enough to put the three in, but it's going to cut the threads when you do it. Um, there's vent holes on this side and there's a little vent cover so that you can adjust the airflow if you need to but you shouldn't really have to. Um, it does come with the uh, rectangle hole for your humidigraph. I'm running both one in here and here because when you're down by the, um, the desiccant, you're gonna get a different reading than up here. It's not really hugely loud, but it can vibrate a little bit just because it's a motor spinning. Um, from there, you've got this is your heater mount. This is a PTC 
200 watt heater. I left all the, the stuff in the description as far as which one I bought. These aren't affiliate links. It's just, I went on Amazon, looked at the reviews and said, yep, that'll work. That's what I need. And it worked and it's been working. It's doing good. Um, it's a 200 watt PTC. This one runs on 110. I didn't want to have to deal with uh, power supplies and all kinds of things. It just straight plug in. It also came with a nice little cord that had a disconnect here. Um, it's running non-polarized. That means it doesn't use a ground. Okay. And if it gets reversed, it still runs and everything's fine. As long as you're running power through and it's going to go. Okay. It doesn't matter if it goes this way, but this way it runs. Um, your heater pieces here, the fan that comes as one piece. This is shaped to accept the PTC because they're, I guess they're made for going on pipes or something, but it's got a slightly rounded surface. It's adjusted. Additionally, this is shaped to funnel the air from a circle down to a half circle so that it fits your uh, spools. It's going to shoot the air down the center. Um, yes, if you look here, the, there's like a slight crack of air that can get through. That's okay because you're creating a positive airflow into here and you kind of want it to seep out wherever it wants to so that it's going to get all that moisture out and get circulated really well. Um, it doesn't really cause a bunch of air coming back in. I've had this off since about a day and a half now and we're still sitting at like 26 and, and so forth. So it doesn't, you're not getting a ton of air back in. You can always close the vent on this side. I forgot to, and that's what it is even without closing the vent. Um, unless you actually have a breeze, it's not really going to, to, siphon in real fast. Uh, I put an on and off switch here. I've got link for all these parts. It's basically just the thermostat, the switches, and the PTC heater. I did not put a link for these because they're a dime a dozen and I got them a million years ago. I can't even remember which ones I bought. I've got it all wired up. Again, I will show you later how to wire this. Um, it's not really loud. It does put out more noise than I like, but that's because the fan is right up against the uh, the PTC heat sink, basically, the, or the, the, the heater, and it kind of causes some back pressure. So you, you were going to feel air on this side, but there's still air going through. It's just not very much, and you don't need it to be very much. You've got a nice little tiny, very super light breeze right there. Enough time for the hot air to go in, pick it up, and go out. Interestingly, I have this set for 125, or excuse me, 115, and there's instructions on how to set these heaters. It's relatively simple. In most cases, you just hold the S for set. It's going to come up with an F1, depending on which one you buy. I bought a slightly more expensive one because I wanted Fahrenheit. Um, you're going to go through F1, F2, F3, F4, and like I said, F5 for this one because it does Fahrenheit and you can switch between the two. F1 allows you to press set and that's the temperature you have it set to. You can go up and down once you're in there to set it and then hold the S to, to save. Two, this is the variant, so if it's above or below, it, it drops. Okay, so when it, it gets to that temperature or gets within that, it turns on the relay for heating or turns on the relay for cooling. I'm not using the cooling one, obviously, but I have it on the heating one. And if it times out, it just goes back to there. Number three is uh, basically a, 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 a delay second. This has been set so that if you have it set to a compressor, like in a refrigerator, you don't want to have short starts just sitting there and going ka-ching, ka ka it, it rejects it. This thing, not a problem whatsoever. PTC heaters are basically self-regulating, which means they get to a certain temperature. They're, when they're built, they're sized, and that size determines what temperature it can do. This, the max it can do is 260, okay? Um, if you go to, say, 100, you're only going to get about 108, so you're going to be maxed out pretty much all the time, which is okay. 
So if you're only doing 108 and you just want it to be 108, that's cool. You can just run it all the time. So a PTC of 100 would probably work. I'd have to test it to see. Um, but it, it won't go any higher than that. It's not going to burn things down. Um, the third one allows you to adjust it. So if you use a different uh, temperature sensor and the probe is off and you're using a little thermometer and you're checking and you're like, whoa, this is just way off, you can adjust that in there. You can say, okay, plus 30 because this thermometer just is off by that much. And then the F5 is switching between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Of course, if you buy one of the lesser expensive ones, it only does Celsius, so you don't have an F5. Um, let's see. The other thing to think about, I wanted to make sure that we weren't melting plastic, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't causing a problem. So I'm running at about 115. Um, you're going to see that the variant goes up and down. That's because that's the temperature of the actual uh, sensor probe right here, not the temperature of this little uh, heater. What's happening is, is you've got a delay between when the plate gets to the temperature, transferring the heat to the air from the fan, then transferring the heat from the air to the probe. That delay between that amount of time is enough for this blade to keep heating up. So when it gets to 115, it's still trying to get hot because this is reading at about 107. So it says, hey, I still need to heat. So it heats up to 125 or something. It gets finally gets the air heated up and the probe heated up enough and it goes, oh, we are at 115. It turns off the probe, but it's actually sitting at about 130. So it starts cooling down very quickly, but it's, it takes a little bit for it to actually catch back up. So there is a delay between the probe. I've got this set up so that it's nice and close, but to make sure that we can deal with heat against the plastic, what you need to do is just take any kind of silicone, okay? You can get, you know, high temp silicone, whatever, just anything off the shelf silicone, not the latex stuff for the house, but if it says silicone or 100% silicone, you're fine because silicone by on its face or face can handle up to about 450 degrees it's great. In this case, I'm using the silicone kind of as a glue, kind of as a temperature barrier between the plastic and the, the heat. Okay. The other thing I did after I did that is I cut up a paper towel piece. These are very thermal protective. And since you're only getting up to 260 degrees with this heater, you're perfectly safe against ignition because this is not going to even char until you get to about 450. So even if you don't have if the thermostat goes off and it just pushes heat solid 24 7 it's not going to burn this up and it's going to protect and dissipate that heat from melting the plastic okay so all of that's been gone through if you want to know more detail about that and all the things that i did feel free to check out the longer video again i will do another video on the wiring i was actually kind of I like the idea, even though this is a 200 watt, because of the fact that it came 110, you know? It's like no power supplies, no nothing, and I can just disconnect right there, came with it. Not only that, but the extra wiring, when I cut this to go to these, I was able to use that uh, to connect all the other pieces. So I know I had wire that was rated for this electrical. Um, but I'll go through that later. That's how you put this together. It can flip up even when it's on. Bring it down, fits nicely. It's a, it's a nice little snug fit. Um, it goes right into the seals. I don't think there's much else to say. Feel free to download it, enjoy. Uh, let me know what you think.